you're listening to Cosmic Cousins Soul Centered Astrology. For ground in that ass from all the new age sass. I am your host, Jeff Henshaw. Cosmic Cousins is a weekly astrology podcast that is dedicated to honoring the interconnectedness of our universal family through embodied health, self-discovery, and deeper learning. Hey, Cosmic Cousins, welcome back to the show. We are now in the month of May in the year 2020. And in honor of Beltane, I wanted to create a special episode for you for your listening pleasure. Happy Beltane, May 1st, right? Marks the halfway point between spring and summer on the Northern Hemisphere. And it's also the halfway point between autumn and winter on the Southern Hemisphere. So we are nice and fixed in the middle of this season, and that's how we get fixed Earth, right? Taurus season, it's fixed. It's in the middle. So Taurus, it's a beautiful grounded energy. It's ruled by Venus. It connects us to themes of art, of beauty. So I thought today on this episode we would listen to some music to feel into the energy of Taurus. Taurus is connected to the five senses. So whatever you do this Taurus season, pay attention to them. What what senses do you maybe not use as much and how could you activate and awaken them a little bit more? So today we'll be using our sacred sense of sound and hearing and this is to elicit a deeper, more intuitive connection to our internal world and also the world around us. And this is exactly Taurus. So the esoteric phrase for Taurus is, I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. So we're talking about the third eye center here. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. And so you can think of the five senses activate and awaken the the sixth sense or the third eye. And so when we're listening to the music, that's what we're doing. And this is part of Taurus's gift is to use their uh, sensory creativity to connect us more deeply to our truth of who we are. So this is important for us right now during Taurus season, particularly to connect to the third eye, to breathe into the third eye. We're spending a lot of extra time on technology these days, so you know um, that the third eye needs to have extra attention. So give your eyes a break. Uh, Breathe into this sacred center. I have those wireless headphones now, and I'm, I'm very aware to be moderate with my wireless headphone use. And I think... I'm bringing this up because we are really all being asked to become a bit more mindful of our technology use, even though it's such an incredible tool for us at this time. So Saturn is in Aquarius right now, and Saturn is asking us to be responsible. Always Saturn's asking us that, but particularly about Aquarian things. So we're being responsible with technology in If you're interested in Saturn, I have a workshop that's out on Saturn right now. I'll plug that in right now since we're talking about it. You can go to the link in my bio. There's a new three-hour workshop download available for purchase. So you can check out that link to find out more. So we've got Saturn and Aquarius, but we also have Uranus and Taurus. So Uranus and Taurus is reminding us that we receive cosmic insight and technological advances through the wisdom of Taurus, our body, through the wisdom of nature. So both of these transits, Saturn and Aquarius and Uranus and and Taurus, which are coming up on their square in 2021, have a lot of similar invitations for us. And they're both inspiring us to be connected to community through the power of technology, but also to have a more mindful relationship of our body and nature 
Saturn is body and Aquarius technology. Uranus is technology and Taurus is the body. So there, there's a bit of an inverse happening with these two. And that really does not give either planet and these transits the full amount of justice that they deserve. So that's why I'm doing the workshop download on Saturn and I'll eventually do a workshop download on Uranus. But for now, I'll just leave you with that. So we're talking about Taurus. We're talking about the five senses. It's the five senses that act as a gateway portal into our sixth sense of intuition, the third eye. So Taurus individuals, whether you are a Taurus sun, moon, or rising, or maybe you have your north node in Taurus, it's all about the third eye, baby. And for all of us when we're moving through Taurus transits. So today's episode, I present to you a collaboration, and it's with two incredibly gifted artists, both with different mediums. This is the first time I've ever tried anything like this, which feels very Uranian. The sun is hanging out with Uranus in the sky right now. So we're just going to go for it. So the first artist I would like to introduce you to is in fact a Taurus himself, and his name is Michael Anticoli. Michael is an incredible musician and pianist and is very prolific with his composing and is in the works of releasing four albums this year. Not one. Not two, but four. So he's already released two, and there are two more on the way. And y'all are going to love this. So each of the four albums that Michael has created is dedicated to each of the four elements. So there's an album for air, an album for water, for earth, and for fire. And when I asked Michael what inspired this for him, he said he's always wanted to create his own tarot deck, but that he's not as much of a visual artist as he is a sonic creator. So he taught himself, or he thought to himself, why not make a sonic tarot deck? So he has grouped the songs into four families of 14 that represent the minor arcana and the four court cards for each elemental energies. So we're going to listen to one song from each album today. Michael is a Taurus sun, Gemini moon, Scorpio rising, making him a sensual human, Taurus sun, in his neighbor's backyard, Gemini moon, transforming darkness into light, Scorpio rising. And this is what Michael says about his work. Quote, This is a meditation, a journey, the fruits of investigating my own inner archetypes, my own stories, my own experiences. Not having lyrics attached to the work helps others listen to it and paint their stories onto it, use it for their own divination and meditation. Boom, boom, boom. How Taurus in Uranus is that? Or how Uranus... And Taurus, is that? Yeah. (laughs) So Michael sent me one song from each album. So we're going to listen to four songs today on the show. One for each element. So we're going to honor all four elements, which feels like a really powerful ritual for us to do on Beltane. And so before... I recorded this episode, I was listening to the songs on my own, and I couldn't help but keep coming back to this idea that this, these songs were inspired by the four elements in the tarot. So I, I, of course, started just intuiting, oh, which tarot card does this song remind me of the most? And that's when I thought it would be cool if Michael and I both picked a tarot card that we felt most repl- re- reflected the themes of the song. And so we have picked two tarot cards for each song. And... All of these ideas are sparking off right now, right? Because Uranus is in Taurus, and it's conjunct the sun right now. So I'm feeling very Uranian, but also very Taurian. And that's when I saw that Claire, the word, the word witch on Instagram, just launched their Kickstarter for their new Fifth Spirit Tarot. So Claire, this is where the other collaboration comes in. I hope you're following this. Claire is a queer and non-binary tarot reader, educator, illustrator, writer, podcaster, and witch. Claire is an Aquarius sun, Gemini moon, and a Scorpio rising, making them an innovative human, 
Aquarius Sun, in their neighbor's backyard, Gemini Moon, transforming darkness into light, Scorpio Rising. So both Claire and Michael have the same moon and rising. So that's cool already. We're seeing a collaboration in the works here, which is happening now. So Claire is the person behind the Word Witch Tarot and the host of the Word Witch Podcast. And now, of course the creator of the Fifth Spirit Tarot, which is a modern and inclusive tarot deck for a world beyond binaries. And this deck is truly remarkable. Its images are really vast, and they really speak to my queer heart, so I wanted to share it with you on today's episode in an effort to support the Kickstarter for Fifth Spirit Tarot. So I reached out to Claire and asked them if they would like to join in with this music meditation Beltane ritual episode, and Claire said yes. So... The tarot images that Michael and I will be reflecting on when listening to his four songs are from Claire's Fifth Spirit Tarot. So when you hear us talking about the tarot cards, you could look along with the images and and meet this new tarot deck that's beautiful and then support it on Kickstarter if if you'd like to purchase one. So if you'd like to view the images along with us when we're talking about them on this episode, you can check out my website. I have a page dedicated just to this episode where you can view the images. And there's also a link to Michael's music and to the Kickstarter for Fifth Spirit. Or you can go to my Instagram, which is cosmic.cousins, where I also have posted these images of Fifth Spirit Tarot as a video with Michael's music in the background. So... This is a lot of preliminary information, but essentially it's because this is a gift for you on this Beltane. And it's my hopes that this elicits a deeper connection to both your tarot and astrology practice in an enjoyable way. That's helping you connect with your intuition. Music is an incredible tool for opening up a window into our deeper knowings, into into another world. And... It's something that I like to do in my tarot practice is hang out with a card while listening to a song. When do you gift yourself a full like four minutes to sit and just gaze at a card? You'll be amazed at what will come up for you. And so what a wonderful time for us to be doing this during tour season as we're building up toward the Scorpio full moon next week. So thank you as always for being here. At this time, let's go ahead and dive into this week's episode. I'm feeling really Venus and Gemini right now because I've got some handwritten notes, but I also have notes on the computer. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to be here with you. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, Here with us on the show today, I'm super excited to introduce you to my dear friend, Michael Moon, also known as Michael Anticoli. That's, um, I, I call you Michael Moon. That's my special name for you. And I, I'm excited to have you on because this is a project that is going to allow us to bring together a lot of your different loves. So we're bringing music together with tarot, together with astrology. And this is how your new project began, which is why you're on the show today. So would you like to tell us a little bit about you or a little bit more about your project? Uh, sure, yeah. I have... Uh been playing the piano for a very long time, I guess over 20 years. And I taught myself to play by ear and I've always just been kind of making up songs. Now that we have all these digital mediums and we're able to record and just keep piles of recordings around, I I realized I had really accrued quite a bit of music. And so I kind of split it up into different groups and saw that it all, it hung together in different ways. And I paralleled that with my other studies at the time, which are tarot and astrology, things I'm passionate about. And uh, it was interesting to see the way that it all weaved together in its own way. And so I decided to share the music in four groups of 14, kind of emulating the, the minor arcana of the tarot to, to help me as well form a, uh, just a framework to work with. Because when you look at, you know, 14 times four, it's just, it gets overwhelming. 56, mm-hmm. is what I think it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's very connected to the philosophy of tarot, but also it intersects with astrology in a beautiful way too, because it's the same four elements. Um, But as we're going into air, because the first album that you released was On Being a Blade, 
this is connecting us to air. So why did you choose to start with air as the first album? Is there, was there a reason behind that? I don't, I've just been trying to follow my intuition. And mm -hmm. I think that's what I always try to do with, I feel like the, the things I'm most pleased with, with my art and my music are things that where I surrender to intuition and, and didn't think so much and didn't mm -hmm. get into my head. And I, I thought that the way into this project, this idea that I had, I thought, the best way in was through my head and through the stories I tell myself and through the swords. Which is a beautiful once, invitation for the air element, right? It's not so much about being heady as it is being intuitive. Tr ex truly. And, you know, sometimes you got to use the swords to clear the brambles so you can get closer to your intuition, get a little bit of clarity. And then once I did that, I realized, oh, there's a lot of emotion here. So then I moved on to Vessel. Yeah, so here we go. So... Connecting to air, you have a Gemini moon, and I'm curious, anything you'd like to share about your Gemini moon? It, the Gemini aspect of myself is, I think, where the stories come into play. And also, like, I love data and documentation. I love, I keep a journal, I keep a diaries. I, have, I just love being able to write down stories of what has happened. And so each of these songs is kind of like that for me. You know, I listen to the song and it's like a diary entry. So I think it's a, just a lot. I love processing information. I love mm -hmm. talking to people, being in my neighborhood, absorbing just the minutia. The smallest mm -hmm. thing can instigate a song or an inspiration. So I do notice with your songs that the titles are really nice too, which feels like that could be a nice Gemini gift there too. And so the song that we chose to listen to from your Air Element album on Being a Blade is titled Skype with God. Mm -hmm. And we each, so this is part of the process that me and Michael did with this is we each, we listened to the song and then we each picked a tarot card that we thought most embodied the song. And so we're gonna talk about these tarot cards and they're also available for you to look at and to gaze at. This is a big part of my practice with tarot is to use music to activate and awaken a deeper relationship with the tarot energy. And so it's cool to be getting to know the fifth spirit tarot in this way. And I hope that those of you listening will gift this to yourself this time to pull up these images and really look at them and see what they want to bring up within you and how Michael's music awakens that because it's, it's really done that for me. Um, if not, if you're not looking at the images, you can also just listen along and know that we're tuning into the element of air um, here. But we'll share with you the tarot cards that we both intuitively selected for this song before we go in there so you can have that in mind. And so the card that you chose, Michael, is the Six of Swords. Six of Swords, I feel like whenever I pull that card, it's a sigh of relief. It's a moment of contemplation and conversation with yourself and with spirit and about how you want to move forward. And I feel like whenever I'm in a place where I need guidance or don't know what shore I'm heading towards, I, I call it Skyping with God when, when I try to go in and connect with spirit. And so that's whenever I see this card, I think of leaving a place of uncertainty towards a place of uncertainty but having God on your side and it's it's cool because the image from the fifth spirit tarot is gorgeous it really Stunning. it really shapes the energy of this card too and it it almost fits this song even more than the Rider Waite depiction so I'll describe this card to you a little bit so that those of you listening can feel into it but there's a boat in the water it's got six swords but then there's six birds in the sky flying in a v and there's a crescent moon off in the distance but the border of the card is it's not a perfect rectangle or square it's kind of more watery feeling actually so there's a lot of water coming in here in the imagery but then the expanse of the air and the birds so that's a cool image. And then this, the card that I selected to go with this song is the Page of Swords. And the Page of Swords here uh, in this image is 
incredible. It's got long hair. It's reading a book. And it really reminds me of when I was a student and just learning. So there's this eagerness here to learn. And so seeing these two cards together, I think, is going to take you into a new world. And so why don't we go ahead and listen to this song now? I have really felt an opening through the heart. Mm -hmm. Gazing at these cards and hearing the music, it just felt like so much was clearing out in the heart. And this is actually something I really feel with the Six of Swords too. And so I wrote down hopeful resurrection. Mm. And it really feels like this threshold of a new beginning in many ways i felt this like lightness and this eagerness and this hope but also that felt like this deep spiritual debris that was getting cleared out yeah mm. it's like you've been through it but a structure for you to stand on now that, that the spiritual debris can be clear but there's structures that you can stand on the things that you've achieved and accomplished and gone through so there's hope this, hope for resurrection i love that thank you this is connecting us to the air element in so many ways and when we listen to that song any parts of you that in your chart you have gemini libra or aquarius this is a great meditation for these parts of your chart we all have them somewhere and it's reminding me so i've actually paired a transit that we're moving through at this time with each of these songs 
and the pairings of the cards. And so this reminds me of the Gemini North Node that we're moving into. Mm. I, I, that shift, it starts on May 6th. It's coming up for all of us. We have the <laughs> shift May 6th to January 18th of 2022. So for the, the next year and a half. Wow. And so when I, when I see these two cards together, it does, there is an opportunity for us over this next year and a half to go through a hopeful resurrection through the power of air. Did anything new come to you as we were listening to this, this time around? Kind of. Yes. It was, it, it felt like a new healing, a new level of healing with this song. I mean, to be honest, every time I, I, this is one of my favorite songs. Um, Mm -hmm. And every time I hear it, it just, it makes my heart expand. Just like you said, Mm -hmm. but looking at these two cars next to each other made me realize everything you've gone through is an achievement, even the torrent. This is so interesting to, to pair it in this way. What does it feel like for you to, to look at someone else's artwork with your, cause I know you said you, you're a fan of Claire's tarot work. Oh yes. I've always loved their spreads and their work and just their, per, their perspective on, on the tarot is always from an angle I never would have looked at, which, and it always broadens my perspective. So I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. I feel like looking at these two next to each other made me realize further and broaden my understanding of my spiritual toolbox. Your swords are stories, they're tools, but they're weapons. They're, it's, it, it's your toolbox. There's no need to deny any aspect of yourself. Everything can be transmutated. Which is a nice word, I think, that takes us into the water element. So our mm. next one is the vessel, right? So on being a vessel. Yes. So wounded moon. See, these titles are so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and even just seeing them paired with the tarot cards before even listening to the music, it's, there's so much power in the title. So the cards we have paired here, you chose the five of cups and I chose the eight of cups and they really work well together. Yeah. And the transit that I have for this one is Neptune and Pisces, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Yep. we're in we're in it neptune and pisces for those of you not familiar neptune entered pisces in 2011 and it stays in this mutable water sign until 2026 so this is a time of in its highest of spiritual awakening expansion connecting to music to poetry to magic to the mysteries of it all and then on a lower form neptune and pisces is a time of confusion and fear and fogginess and paranoia so we we're in this for some time and i already by seeing the title wounded moon and the two cards that we have this really reminds me of pisces season this year Mm -hmm. when everything came out with covid19 we're on lockdown just feeling so much emotion so the five of cups here it shows a house that is surrounded by water. And it's like a vortex of black water with a boat that's out to sea. And there's five cups above the house. And I gotta be honest, like when I look around the place that I'm staying in right now, I'm pretty sure I have all five of these cups like scattered (laughs) around. There's like a teacup, a water cup that's full, a coffee mug that's empty, a broken bottle, and an aluminum can that's squashed. And I definitely have all of these represented here. And so there has been this kind of like, almost like chaotic emotional energy around where I've had moments of extreme fear over the past few months, as a lot of us have. And this feels really Neptune and Pisces to me. It feels really Wounded Moon, this title. And I think as we listen to the song, we'll also get an opportunity to to reflect on what we've been through over the past few months. And as we're building up to this Scorpio full moon, which is on May 7th, we also might be feeling some of these themes arise that we'll hear in the music and that we'll see reflected in the Five of Cups and the Eight of Cups. What about you? And what was it that drew you to the Five of Cups for this song that you wrote? I was working on the vessel project. I was just meditating on cups and I found that there were parts of my emotional landscape where I was angry 
And when I've looked through the suit of cups, I've never, I've never really been able to access anger as much through it as I really wanted to or need, felt like I needed to. And the song Wounded Moon comes from a place of pain and sadness and, and like an inability to embody the anger fully. Mm. And I think in some ways that's me looking at the broken cups and not focusing on the possibility of what's still available to me. It's a little bit of like a hypnosis. It's nebulous, just like you said with the Neptune and Pisces. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you're having a stare down with what's wrong instead of the possibility or you're just lost in the fog of it. When I think of that fogginess, that fog is really an invitation to, to go within when it's foggy out, we can't actually see what's going on. So there's a bit of like an inner vision that happens and that's making me think of the eight of cups here, which when we look at this card, it shows eight cups are like pitchers or pots and pans inside of a house that's leaking. And the, the little droplets are being caught by the vessels, but the door is open and there's a full moon out and there's a path it's leading over rolling hills into the night. And so there's a definite soul searching. The cool thing is when we were selecting these cards, at least when I was selecting these cards, I was basing them off of the Rider weight. I wasn't basing them off of uh, the fifth spirit. Me too. So it was a bit of a surprise to see Claire's interpretations of, of the cards and how actually this eight of cups speaks even more to Wounded Moon than maybe even the writer way depiction. So it was a bit of, of a cool like reveal to, to look up these cards and see how they matched. I've been feeling equally five of cups over the past few months as I have eight of cups too. I definitely feel like I'm in, it's like a new vision. If we're talking about that fogginess of trying to go within and get really clear on what's to come, but also being in the uncertainty of it. Eight of cups for me is always a card of, it is of, of deep soul searching, we're, right? We're leaving a leaking house here. It's actually drier outdoors. So we're walking <laughs> into the shadows and, and it feels like here, it's like the shadows of, of the heart or the shadows of those deeper emotions. And remembering that emotions, like you said, can also be rage. It doesn't necessarily have to just be sadness. It, there can be all kinds of different explorations here. And so it's, I feel, I feel like walking into the shadows with grace is what yeah. I get from, from looking at both of these together. So why don't we go ahead and listen to Wounded Moon and see what wants to reveal itself. Let's do it.
This song makes me, it brings up so much emotion for me. I feel it so much and it, it, it's like going, it's like you're taking us on a journey into your world and to, it does feel like there's this transformation that's happening. I feel when looking at it with these cards, I actually, if you look at the five of cups, you see that the house is surrounded by water and I didn't notice this before, but in the attic, the light's on. Oh yeah. And I was actually picturing you in the attic playing the piano up there when I was connecting to this with the tides outside just rushing around yeah and it was almost like there was another part of yourself that was like in the boat and maybe that Mm. was like a a memory or something but there was this like very like the person upstairs in the attic like conjuring processing transforming grief did anything come up for you when you looked at these well yeah i mean i could hear the the droplets of water hitting the vessels mm. and the pots and the eight. Yes. They, they, it almost like animated the card in a way and I could see the stars twinkling outside and I could hear, actually hear the, the water. And I, I also noticed that the, the light in the attic and, you know, the boat that's kind of on its way out and, you know, how with the five of cups, it's about perspective, you know, you, you have access to both. You can be out there in the torrent or you can be up in the attic warm at mm-hmm. the piano. You have the choice. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with the Eight of Cups. You have the choice to stay in the leaky house or you know, go out and sing at the moon. I like that you say sing at the moon. There is a peaceful energy out there, it seems, huh? The it Eight does. It looks so inviting. It looks more inviting than inside, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So there's a little bit of like inversion happening here. One house is like calm and like it's stormy outside and then the other one, it's storming inside and then it's peaceful outside. So the, it's an interesting to see how we intuitively pick the cards and also to see how Claire channel these cards too. And wow, there's something about your music that really goes well here because it's all music. There's no words. So it really fosters this ability to go deeper into the cards. And it must be such a interesting experience for you are so what i'm hearing from you is that you noticed maybe the sounds that that brought to attention the the droplets of water had you ever thought of those sounds as droplets of water before no i have not actually it was really wonderful i mean it 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 merged the two pieces together the song and 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 claire's work is wonderful Mm -hmm. and i mean i intentionally you know, I've written songs with lyrics, but this project specifically, it was even a struggle to entitle the songs because I didn't, I didn't want to name them one, two, three, four, five, but I didn't want to, I just didn't want to steal anything away from the possibility of someone painting it with their own story or their own divination. You have right. a choice. And I think that's also a beautiful reminder for all of us that the cards that we selected maybe aren't the cards that you listening to this are selecting. Mm-hmm. We're also encouraging you to use a completely different tarot deck uh, to maybe even pull a card in a divinatory way. Whereas Michael and I consciously chose the cards based off of the energy that we knew and what we were hearing in the song. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited to just share this, this meditation with you all in this sort of way. And I hope that it sparks some new insights for you Maybe if you're a musician or an artist of different ways that you can connect with the tarot. So that kind of is a nice introduction to our next element, which is about creation. So fire comes next, right? Fire, yep. Yep. Okay, so (laughs) the title of that album is? On Being a Spark. On Being a Spark. One Night to Learn is the title of the song that we selected from this album. And by the way, the first two albums that we listen to, the first two songs we listen to are from first two albums that Michael's released that you can find on Spotify. And I'll put a link in the show notes to that. So if you want to listen to the whole album and go on a whole tarot journey with these albums, you can. Yeah, please do. And you can also reach out to us and let us know if anything comes of it. Mm -hmm. But 
now we transition into fire here. So One Night to Learn is the title of this song. I'd love, this one is such a curious title to me. I'd love to hear what this song <laughs> is about for you. This song, so sometimes songs take 10 years for me to feel like it's written and composed and, and finished. And then sometimes I'm lucky to hit record in time. And this song was one of those songs where I was lucky to hit record. I don't even, I mean, I've, I can play it back. It won't be note for note. It's, it changes every time. It's its own organism. But I, uh, I was invited to a party where everyone was, was going to be playing poker and I've never played poker. And I got very just frantic about it. And so instead of studying or poker online, I just went to the piano and I hit record and this came out. <laughs> and wow. it was my meditation on, you know, having one night to learn something and, and have like, then I had to access this kind of faith in myself. What are my abilities? Do, what, what can I do? You know? Oh, interesting. It, it, yeah. <laughs> wow. And it, it is interesting to see it here with the cards that we have paired with it so this was the the one song that michael and i both chose the same card which felt very fire to me yes like fire is just so clear and so direct um when you wrote me an email about these different albums i was really struck by what you said about with spark you said with spark i'm exploring passion atomic uncertainty the alchemy of fire not thinking and just opening the channel okay let's unpack this because i was ato <laughs> atomic uncertainty whoa What's yeah that? <laughs> uh, it's like you know physics kind of like when you they, when you study the atom and you get down to particles they're not in they're never in one place for long mm -hmm. they, they, <laughs> There's a lot more space than there is mass in the universe. And just when I think about fire and spark, I think it, I, I really think in a grander scheme, like universal fire, a big bang, like huge gas clouds. So, but atomic uncertainty is like just the uncertainty of, of knowing anything and having to, to realize that the space between the particles is truly where we lie. Wow. Or, or, or not. <laughs> There's <Yeah>. uncertainty. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Eight of Wands really does feel like it embodies that. So traditionally, Eight of Wands, right? Y'all know it. It's the Eight Wands flying through the sky. They're all, they all are parallel to each other. And it's sort of like this mid-shot. Like we feel the movement. We feel the swiftness in that card. Why were you drawn to Eight of Wands for this song? This is one of those songs that if I think about it while I'm playing it, I'll mess it up. When we hear nice. it in a second, you'll see it's it's kind of staccato and fast. And mm -hmm. when I look at the Eight of Wands, it's it's there are, the wands have already been thrown. It's kind of there's no look. You know, it's you have to follow through at this point. <laughs> there's no going back. And, you know, when I signed up for this party to go and play poker, there was no turning that down. It's, it's, so now I have one night to learn, like, this is what we have, where the things are in motion. And now it's time to surrender and see how far we can fly. So it, there's, there's a little bit of a shift happening here with this deck that we're looking at here with the fifth spirit. So it shows in this deck, we'll see, it looks like, what are they, rockets? It's like eight rockets and they're all tied together to the same fuse. And it, it's kind of a long fuse. Like it almost looks like you light the fuse and you have like a minute before the rockets go off. But when they go off, all eight of them are going off. What I find mm -hmm. interesting about them is that they are erect. Like they're pointing up. <laughs> and it almost looks like they're inside. Like it looks like the, a floorboard. So mm -hmm. I'm not picturing like setting off like eight rockets in your home. A little bit of danger here. And because when I think of like shooting a rocket up, it feels like it might fall back down on you. So there is a little <laughs> bit of a shift here in this eight of wands, but it still has that exactly what, what you so beautifully described as the atomic uncertainty of it all. And since we both chose that card just for consistency, I, I picked another card so we could have two <laughs> cards to look at. 
And so I selected the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands here in this deck is fierce. Is I love it. Is sitting on this like what kind of chair would you say that is? Like it's like a lounge chair, but a very nice one. Yeah, it's a, it's got that fiery red. There's like a yellow glow around the chair. It's kind of antique like. Like um, a chaise. Yes. And the Queen of Wands has a black cat, which traditionally Queen of Wands is often depicted with a black cat. But this black cat is up on the arm of the chair, right behind the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is, you know, kind of lovingly caressing the cat's face, it appears. And the wand is is not erect or activated it's more kind of like if you were like to loosely hold a cigarette off to the side like it almost feels like that to me there is this like calm coolness with confidence and i quite like it matched with this song it gives an, a new flavor to it looking at the queen of wands there that i brought in this kind of wild energy and looking at these two cards together i see the the curve of the black cat's tail but also the curve of the fuse of the rockets and there is this this uncertainty uh the atomic uncertainty of it all like adaptability and changeability happening here with the fire element it's wonderful i mean this is kind of what i think this project wanted to itself to be and these songs wanted to be shared and now people can access them in in a diverse amount of ways like I never would have thought like with looking at this queen of wands and listening to this song and knowing what it means to me this queen of wands has such a non assuredness and that's kind of that goes along with lighting a fuse you know it's mm -hmm. you have to have a little bit of uh, faith in in your chutzpah mm -hmm. and thinking of your story too I'm now imagining this queen going to poker night and not knowing what she's doing, but actually putting on a poker face and, mm -hmm. and slaying. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay. what happened. But. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is One Night to Learn.
So I have to ask, I noticed just now that this song is three minutes and 33 seconds. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever notice that? Um, that, that? I did not notice that, no. But that's fascinating. Feels very like creative and dynamic there too with that three. And that's, this is one of the words I wrote down. I, I wrote down delicate, dynamic, determined, these three D words. So the number three coming in there again, but that's interesting. It felt de- delicate to me. Like there was like a lightness to it, but it also was very dynamic at the same time. And I think that's why after reflecting on it, knowing we both had picked the eight of wands, I listened to the song again and I wanted there to be a bit more of that queen energy represented because there was, it's like a, there's a flowing to it, which all of the queens to me are about a flowing energy. And so it felt, I wrote down here, flowing madness and faith. Mm, I love that. And I also wrote, it feels like time is running out. <laughs> there is that kind of feeling to me, which is interesting when looking at the, the fuse that's been lit. There's, yes, that's what became evident to me, the fuse. I could hear and almost like see that little spark at the end of the fuse getting closer to the event at the end. Like the, uh-huh. the, assur- the sure thing that's going to happen. Seeing them together, it feels like the queen is looking. It's like two views of the same room. Like the queen is like gazing at the, like is kind of proud of herself, just lit the, the fuse and is watching the rockets like before they're about to, to go off. It does look that way. And the queen's just like embracing the cat and they're, they're going to watch the show together. Yeah, I feel like with the Eight of Wands, it's already in motion. So have faith in, in the energy you put into it and enjoy the show. So mm-hmm. it's interesting because I, as the North Node is going into Gemini, the South Node is going into Sagittarius. And the song and the, both of these cards together do connect me to Sagittarius too. The Eight of Wands always connects me to Sagittarius. It makes me think of the archer shooting the bow and arrow. Mm. And then the Queen of Wands often will connect me to Sagittarius because I think of queens as being mutable and then the wands fire, so mutable fire. There could also be some frustration around some of this energy right now because the South Node will be moving through Sagittarius over the next year and a half. So our long-term visions aren't necessarily going to be activated like they normally are. And so I find it interesting. Like, for instance, you thought that this album on being a vessel was going to be out for Beltane and now things have shifted and our long-term plans aren't necessarily coming into fruition. It's more about the immediate Gemini North Node over the next Mm. year and a half. One night to learn. I love the backstory there. So now we get to move into our final element. Saving the best for last. (laughs) I mean, definitely the sturdiest. Yes. (laughs) It's interesting. So you call this one on on being a stone? Yes. Just to, you know, complete the the theme. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why I saved Earth for last. I just, like I said, I just just followed my intuition. And the songs are, they're kind of telling me what to do and, and who's ready and and when it's time. So I, I trust that. Um, so with Earth, I've just I've been meditating on what that, what, what does Earth mean? What does the physical nature mean? And meditations on just things that I can touch, things that I can affect, things that are here and now. And because I'm a, tour, I'm a Taurus, I'm an Earth sign, so I should already be so connected to that element. And I think that I am connected to that element, but maybe sometimes the things that you're closest to are maybe the hardest to see. Yeah, I, for me, it's like when we're, th- when we're connecting to this earth energy, wherever you have Taurus or Virgo or Capricorn in your chart, you might really feel a resonance here with this song and with these cards that have been selected. Um, Noisy Coins is the name of this song. I love this title. It's, it's like... It's not a word I would normally associate with coins, but it already awakens memories of, you know, like when I was a kid and I 
was counting the coins in the living room that I had saved up and you dump all the coins out. Is there a backstory to this title? This song was written without a title and I knew that I wanted to have it on earth. So also with these records, I've been thinking about musical structure. And so, you know, with Vessel, I wanted it to have more flow. And with, you know, with Spark, with the fire, it's a little more staccato and unpredictable, just like fire. So with Earth, I've been thinking more about structure and, and um, not predictability, but dependability in a way. And so I was focusing more on that, wrote the song. And then the one I meditated on the song, I kind of had this vision of when I have to shake out all my clothes at the end of the day and I have quarters and pennies and and mm. you know the sound of them in the pocket and then I meditated deeper on it and thought about like what is the sound of my money and what is the sound of what I'm doing with my money and then also how do I make my money and then basically what am I making with what I'm made of like what is the mass mm. and the gravity of what I'm doing here in the in the world in the physical realm like how loud are the sounds of what I'm doing how noisy are my coins? <laughs> hmm. Looking at these images in context, what you're saying, it's kind of already awakening some new insights. Why don't we look at these cards then? So we've got the Page of Pentacles is the card that you selected to go with this song. And the depiction in the Fifth Spirit Tarot is so magical. It shows I love it. a page that's on their knees and almost looks like they might be in sand and there's a mm -hmm. pentacle by by their ankle and they kind of have like a rat tail ponytail and like short bangs so it's almost like a mullet but the mullet's like pulled back and then um is a like what is that floating in the sky it looks like some sort of plant with roots yeah it looks like a like an orchid or, or it's a it's a bulb that's blooming like a a tulip or dand uh, daffodil. Mm -hmm. And then in the sky is a rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. It's, it's, it's not fully in the, in the image. It's kind of like in the corner. So that's nice. And this is actually reminding me of two different transits that we're moving through that are connecting us to the earth element. And so one of them is Jupiter and Capricorn this year, which I feel like Jupiter and Capricorn is not fully getting its meditation because we have pluto there you know and mm -hmm. saturn and capricorn and the pluto saturn conjunction feels like maybe in some ways that's dominating our thoughts or the pluto jupiter conjunction the three of them this year but when meditating on just jupiter in capricorn i often think of jupiter energy as having like a rainbow kind of feel to it there's some sort of like faithfulness to Jupiter mm. and I do I do sense and see with a lot of people around us that we are expanding into our responsibility this year in a bigger way than we ever have before and yes there's a deep psychological transformation around Capricorn themes but we are all expanding and leveling up in a new way and for me Jupiter and Capricorn I'm also seeing you know, like people who are doctors right now are really being asked to expand into their career in a new way. People mm -hmm. who are scientists or farmers or even a lot of astrologers are expanding in a new way. We're all being asked to, to show up in a very Jupiterian way to support the community. So I, I do feel this in this card of, you know, and I feel Uranus and Taurus too with this card too which is our other major earth transit and taurus nature is connecting us to nature and it's innovative new ideas and thoughts in nature is one way we can look at uranus and taurus radical change to our money so we're all at this time really being asked to become our own source of income uranus and taurus in many ways not to have to rely on capricorn government or our career to do that and so i see that reflected in the page of pentacles here there's a sense of okay i'm going to come up with this new genius idea and um, it, i'm going to grow it and it feels like it's coming from a place of joy and so one of the notes i wrote down from this song 
is, and I think this is going to connect us to the Eight of Pentacles, which is the card that I picked for this song, is that there's, there's a structure and a hard work to the song, is what I wrote. And I said it feels laborious, but also joyful. Mm-hmm. And that's why I picked the Eight of Pentacles, because this is a card to me. Often it's shown it was someone at their workbench diligently working, but they are really enjoying it. It's very joyful. And I sense that from this song. So I'm inviting you all to tune into that as you listen to it. Where do you, where do you find joy in your work and your structures? Mm-hmm. I'm curious if, if this is in alignment with any attentions that you had when creating this song. Yeah, I actually almost chose the Eight of Pentacles because you know, the song is about it's it's about work. It's almost a sixth house. It's what do we do every day? Because what you do with your days is what you do with your life. And are we generating joy with the noise, with the money that we're generating? And so that's very eight of pentacles. What are you making? What are you working on? But I thought that the, the song came from a place of pondering because I don't know if I've really found my answer yet. So I think the curiosity in the page lends itself to me still allowing myself to be curious about what kind of noise I want to make with the coins. Yeah, and having the, the floating plant there almost makes it seem imaginary or like being conceptualized. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll tune into this song and see if anything else wants to come through. daydreamy but then also flowing and like getting inspired through the daydream and it's almost felt like this um, sense of giving yourself permission to not be working or not be productive and then 
because of that inspiration comes then you're able to really focus on and fine tune your craft that's mm. what i saw when looking at these cards and hearing the music because there were moments where it was soft and quiet and then there were moments where it felt like busier and like harder yeah i mean when i see these two cards next to each other and, and look at and, and hear and think about it it's it's offering like it's the, the, the noisy coins because sometimes it's too loud because you're working too hard you're working too much sometimes you've lost track of the vision of what you're trying to manifest or what you're trying to grow so it, the invitation to rest i didn't even think about until looking at these two next to each other but in the song the song does have moments and movements where it works really hard and then moments where it has to come the hands are taking a breath and preparing for the next phase of working hard <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this feels really important for us, this message that's coming through as we have so much earth in the sky right now with Capricorn and Taurus. Like, I, I, I don't know if you've been feeling that. I know in my own life, it's like I have more time to be at home, as we all do right now, in many ways, many of us. But I also have been, I've also been diligently working too, and not just like, on like career and work stuff, I've been connecting more with my food. Mm. You know, like I, I made cider this week. I made like a big batch of soup. I've made all of my own food now for almost two months. I've never done that. <laughs> so this message coming through of like giving ourselves some space to breathe and to dream feels nice and imbalanced with with the flow of earth and working and i that's something i think of in many ways that taurus can teach us as being the earth sign ruled by venus so i've spent the night at michael's house when i came back to la from new york before i came up here to northern california michael let me crash on his couch and inside the apartment you and your roommate have like affirmations up and there's one that really sticks out in mind to me which is on top of your refrigerator do you know which phrase i'm talking about we have plenty yeah we have <laughs> plenty is, is that the name of one of your songs it is it's the first song on on being a vessel might so be nice to play that song, song too <laughs> It's a beautiful song. Yeah, I think that would be such a good song for us to end on because what I'm learning right now through everything that we're moving through and what I've learned from you as being a grounding force in my life and beautifully aligned with your Taurian energy is captured in this phrase, we have plenty. And there's a new sense of gratitude that's awakening for all of us at this time, whether it's, you know, just the gratitude of having this technology to be able to connect in this sort of way at this time, you know, or expressing gratitude for the workers at the grocery store. And just, I feel a new mindfulness awakening.
thank you so much, Michael Anticoli, for being on the show this week with us. Again, I'll put the links in the show notes so you can check out Michael's albums, one for each element. And thank you so much, Claire, the word witch, creator of Fifth Spirit Tarot, for giving us those images to look at and to peer into and to taking us into other worlds. I'll put a link in the show notes to Fifth Spirit Tarot Kickstarter as well. Check out that deck. It's beautiful. And if you're interested in studying with me about Saturn, the planet of spiritual adulting, I have a new workshop download that is available for pre-enrollment on my website, astrologycousins.com. I also have some openings coming up at the end of May for astrology readings. It would be an honor to hold space for you. Two hour deep dive into the soul invitation of your birth chart. If you're interested in learning more, check out the notes, the show notes, and I'll see you next time on May 7th for the Scorpio full moon. Take sweet care, cousins, and remember, deep breaths. <laughs>